If you've been negatively impacted by a Google algorithm update, it can be really nerve wracking. You likely saw your keyword rankings drop on a specific date and you're unsure what exactly led to um, the keyword ranking drop. The issue is that Google doesn't send you a notification letting you know the reason why your keyword rankings dropped. Um, and so what happens is a lot of webmasters really have no clue what led to this and they can't fix the issue. Fortunately, in this video, I'm gonna explain the most common reasons why a website experiences a drop in keyword rankings. I've audited hundreds of businesses that have been negatively impacted by a Google algorithm, and I help them work through their issues on their website uh, so they can get back in the good graces of Google. And I, would I wanna bring this to the forefront for you so you know what to fix on your website. Let's dive into it. Quality issues on your website often lead to a drop in keyword rankings, and so many people have no idea about this. The way I like to explain this is, imagine your website has 100 pages. 70% of the pages are low quality content. 20% are mediocre, and only 10% are great, truly unique content. Well, in Google's lens, they are saying, your website overall has quality issues because 70% of the pages are low quality, so we're gonna downgrade the website, hence the drop in keyword rankings. So one of the first things I like to do during an audit of a site that's been impacted by a penalty is assess the content quality. And let's dive into how I do that. Believe it or not, blogs are often the culprit of what leads to low quality content on a website. One of the biggest misconceptions in SEO is that blogs and fresh content help your SEO and help your keyword rankings. This couldn't be further from the truth. When a blog is published and it is not of quality, it's thin content, or it's not on a related topic to your business, uh, this does more harm than good. So, so many agencies pitch blog writing because it's an easy deliverable. It's complete BS. You want your blog posts to serve as sales collateral uh, for current or prospective clients. And when you analyze your blog, and if you wouldn't share that with a current or prospective customer, very likely it could be low quality content. So let me walk you through an example here of a blog that is doing more harm than good for a business. This roofing company wrote a blog on the world is not flat and neither are flat roofs. What it's doing is it's talking, it's giving some facts about flat roofs and it's comparing it to the truth about the, our, our round planet. Um, this is not a piece of content that should be shared with a current or prospective client because this doesn't really relate to anybody's roofing project. Um, is it somewhat on topic to roofing? Sure, but that's a stretch. Also, the content on this blog, it's thin content. There's only, there's less than 300 words on here. So there's not a lot of depth to the piece. Well, this roofing company has many blog topics that are similar to this that are off topic, thin on content, and not really that relevant. And let's just go back to my prior pie chart example. If this roofing company had 100 pages on their site and they've written 40 of these low quality blog posts, Google is gonna view this as a low quality site and that could be impacting your rankings. So one thing you wanna do is if you have low quality blogs, you want to determine whether or not those should be deleted redirected or enhanced, and I'll get into that later. So you have a couple of options like I alluded to earlier. You could delete a piece of content if it's no longer relevant. You could rewrite it if the topic is relevant, but the content just needs enhanced. You can redirect it if there's another page on your website that's similar to that same piece of content. Um, or if it's just good as is, you could leave it as is. So I like to create this Google Sheet where um, I have that chart, the color-coded chart to show me whether to delete, redirect, rewrite, or if it's good as is. And even for the media captain for our blog, every couple of years, I like to go through this exercise because content gets outdated, our business changes, and blogs from four or five years ago aren't always relevant. Um, so even going to this example right here, how many pictures to post on Instagram? 
I probably wrote that blog in 2013 or 2014. I was trying to gain a lot of traffic to our website, but it's not something that is really that relevant to our business. So I decided to delete this. Um, this one above, suburb, city, or state keywords, what's best for SEO. We had another one, uh, another blog about location pages for SEO. So we redirected that. So this is an exercise that we like to do when determining whether to delete, enhance, redirect, or keep as is. Another issue with many sites is duplicative content. Uh, this is where the content is just very similar in nature across the board. And if you have a lot of duplicative content, this could also lead to a site-wide penalty and a drop in keyword rankings on Google. So here's an example of a different roofing company. Um, for some reason, I'm just picking roofing companies uh, for this video. But here they have a page for Solon Premier Commercial and Residential Roofing Company. Solon's preferred roofing contractors, just some of the services we offer our Solon clients. So Solon is a suburb in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, well, you go here and then they have Twinsburg Premier Commercial and Residential Roofing Company. Twinsburg's preferred roofing contractors. It's literally the same exact content on each of the pages. They're just swapping out some suburb keyword references. Um, sometimes this can work and I will include a link on building out suburb and city level pages within this YouTube video. But if you have a lot of content that's duplicative in nature like this, and you experience a drop in keyword rankings on Google, that can definitely be a culprit for that. So duplicative content um, is an issue that should be audited if you experience a drop in keyword rank. AI generated content is also something that can lead to a duplicative content penalty. And here's an example of a roofing company. Um, and by the way, I'm using originality.ai, which is amazing to detect AI generated content or plagiarized content. But here you could see that this roofing company has 85% um, of the content is generated via AI and only 15% is original. Well, why would Google uh, ding your website for this? Well, the reason is simple when you think about it. If you just go to ChatGBT and get roofing content, um, to put on your website. There are probably 50 or hundreds of other roofers that are using that same exact content. So when the content is not unique and it is duplicative from AI generated content, this is also something that can harm your site. So when we're analyzing a website for a drop in keyword rankings, we look for uniqueness of content and we're constantly uh, auditing this through originality.ai. When it comes to backlinks, this used to be something that was much more prominent in terms of why a website would see a drop in keyword rankings. Um, Google has gone on record and said that low quality links will just be uh, disregarded, meaning that Google really won't take them into consideration because it's so easy for a competitor to just build thousands of crappy links to your site, which would dock your keyword rankings, which wouldn't be fair. So what Google is saying is if it's low quality, we'll pretty much ignore it. But if you get high quality links, obviously that could be beneficial for your business. Um, you know, we still audit backlink profiles just to um, gauge if there's any red flags. For example, if you have a lot of anchor text that is very keyword heavy, where you're trying to go after the keyword SEO company, company and all of your outbound anchor text, that could be an issue. If you are just flooded with um, spammy backlinks from India, uh, and that was all recent, like that could raise uh, a red flag. So we do audit backlink profiles, but they are not as prominent as uh, it used to be in terms of the reason for a drop in keyword rankings. Everything I hit on during this video in terms of low quality content, thin content, duplicative content, AI generated content, low quality backlinks, that leads to over 90% of keyword ranking drops in the sites that I assess. And that's the reason I'm bringing this to the forefront. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll be able to better analyze your site to see if any of those issues are present. And you know, then you can work on fixing those issues. And if you have any questions on how to do that, of course, you can contact me at themediacaptain.com. Do me a favor, if you found this video helpful, subscribe to The Media Captain on YouTube for more digital marketing content.